What up? You're listening to the True Conversation Podcast, presented by Volcom. I'm your host, Fat Tony. And if you haven't heard my voice before, I'm a rapper and more from Houston, Texas. For this series, I'll be joined by guests to discuss the experiences of black Americans in surf, skate, snow, and adjacent subcultures. In each episode, we'll share perspectives that have largely been avoided by the mainstream. In an effort to get rid of bigotry, and create a more inclusive world around the things we love. So when Tommy Guerrero started rapping in Animal Chin and like freestyle, I was like, yo, like it was like, yeah, it was like our worlds meet. And I think that was the first time I know of rapping being in a skateboard video. This is the first time me seeing somebody non-black rap because there was oh, not shit. a black mm. in the Bones Brigade. You know what I mean? Like seeing, well, no, you know what? I take that back. They had gorgeous ladies of wrestling and those ladies were rap. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like back then, you know, we when, when it was merging, skaters came to hip hop and learned about their fashion. Now rappers go to skaters who look at their fashion. Yeah, mm. it's, yes. it's gone full circle and, and back in, around, yeah. and um, and it, it's fascinating. So skateboarding and hip hop is just pop culture now. Mm, it's, right. it's it's every it's in everybody's right, vernacular. Right. There'll always be this inter- intersection just intrinsically now because the roots have already grown into a forest. That was a little taste of a conversation about the relationship between hip hop and skateboarding with Murz, Buku One, and Black Dave. We also talked about how black women are represented in surfing with the ladies behind textured waves. <laughs> I think all of us would say like that it would be the end of our worlds when we were younger if our hair got wet and somebody, God forbid, saw our hair wet in public. Mm. Like, what is that? That's some strange conditioning that we adopt. There's tons of trauma associated with European standards of beauty, I think, for every Black person. Every single yeah. one of us had relaxed hair. We were trying to look like Aaliyah. I needed to accept myself as beautiful in my own natural, pure texture, like not just this straightened, neat um, version of myself. There's lots of Black women that surf or in Brazil and Jamaica and all these other countries that are, are coastal. Mm. Um, but here in the States, we have this like, you know, lack of representation that runs deep. And hopefully there won't be these huge gaps in the history, right? In the documentation. And so that, that next generation and the future generation doesn't have to search to see it. It's in front of their eyes and it's normal to them. And then that we are on that world stage and there's a Serena Williams of surfing in the future. I got to speak with some true originals of snowboarding. Listen as Russell Winfield, Gabrielle Maiden, and Salima Masekela talk about their experiences in the industry and the influence of black American culture on the sport. If you're a beneficiary of a shitty education system, and then some some generational shit that give you that little light prop up to be like, look, we don't they're not bad people, but don't bring one home. Mm. You know, yeah. like don't bring one home to play and surely don't date one. But we love them. They're great people. But yeah, you couple all those things together and you don't have the history of of why these things are a certain way and why these spaces. There's so many spaces where people wouldn't even re- remotely know how to feel a sense of ownership for them. Of course, you'll be able to skip and feel like. Look at this stuff that is just ours. It's just for us. Ba, ba, yeah. ba, ba, ba. And then when you see a Russell or you see a Gabby or you see someone like myself show up in the lift line, you someone you will look at us like someone stole your soul mm. <laughs> because it goes against everything that you thought was humanly possible. And we're, we're not even doing this shit yet. We're just standing in line. Yeah. And that's it's how worse it was when you're for better all than them. It's worse when you're better oh, than them, though. So. Man, man, man. There's like but, one person... She was like, oh, and I didn't, she didn't say this to my face. She said it to a friend of mine. But her saying that the only reason why I got my sponsorship is because I was black. It, it ripped me apart. It was the first time I've ever had a hater and known about anything about hating. I didn't know how to, when my, the, my friend at the time, when she told me, I was just like, what? Because this is someone who I would ride with every day. Mm. first chair last call every day was there ever an influence of black american culture in snow 
Come on, like bro. Fashion, music, <laughs> any of that. Oh my God, I, mean, I feel so like it's hey, a no-brainer. Hey, Tony. Hey, I Tony. Like it's a no-brainer, but I just want to ask hey, you. Hey, Tony, uh, <laughs> let me tell you something. There isn't an atom of America that isn't directly influenced by urban African American culture. There was a, a Transworld Snowboarding Magazine photo issue, and there was a two page spread of this kid doing the, like the most steezed out board slide on this, this, this round rail. <laughs> and I just remember looking really, really close, and I was like, oh shit. I screamed in my <laughs> cubicle. <laughs> People were like, what? I was like, this dude is black. This yeah. dude is black. Why didn't anybody tell me this dude is black? Just immediately cut the pictures out of the magazine and put that shit up in my cubicle. And I was so like, wow. It, it was suddenly like, <laughs> yes. What? Yeah. Russell motherfucking Winfield, what? Please subscribe to True Conversation wherever you listen to podcasts. Yeah. Peace. Yeah.